23. Now, we might think for just a moment of the Christmas stories. The stories that unfold for us during this holiday season that are so familiar to us. It was a routine night, and out on the fields of Bethlehem, the shepherds were gathering. They were there to tend their sheep, and at nightfall, their major concern was as darkness set in, there may be wolves that would come and attack the flock. So they were tending to the sheep, meaning that they were watching over, ministering, looking over, guarding over at all times, maybe all consumed with the work of shepherding the sheep. And lo and behold, the scriptures share with us in the story that they became startled in the middle of the night, watching for something in the sky. They discover it is this great appearance Who, what, what is this? This light in the darkness and the glory of God shining upon them as it shares in the story. Well, you can imagine the chaos that they're experiencing in this moment. Wait a minute, I'm so busy tending sheep. I think my thoughts are going this way. I'm all concerned about this or that. And suddenly something out of the norm appears. You can imagine those shepherds being so startled. But in that moment, there's great words of comfort and perfect peace offered. As the messengers of God, these angels begin to offer these words of calm that begin with simply behold and listen. To become aware and to be silent enough that you can receive and entertain. That very voice that is offering to us that spiritual insight that's ever unfolding for our lives. This story in Christmas is a story for us for each and every day of our life, calling us as we shepherd our thoughts, as we shepherd our thoughts that may go astray. Thoughts being very, sheep being very uh, symbolic of the thought life that goes on and on and on. We can be so consumed with the task of taking care of our thoughts, especially in moments of darkness where we may embrace this sense of fear. Something's coming to attack. Something's coming to hurt. Something, I've got a shepherd. I've got to watch over my thoughts. And then lo and behold, out of the blue comes this beautiful revelation, an awakening that startles us and shakes us up to say, behold, I bring you good tidings. Listen, I bring you good news of great joy which is there for each and every person. This story really is the story of our spiritual life and how we're called to live each and every day. To be living a journey where we are not startled by God thoughts, not startled by the amazing things that come to us that we may think, oh, this is out of the norm, but this should be our norm. Quite often, we are not accustomed to hearing or receiving the very God thoughts of the universe that's ever speaking to us. Because let me tell you this, God is always speaking. That's right. And you may say, wait a minute, I'm not hearing, I'm not hearing. I don't hear the voice of God as if it were some resounding thundering voice or some high-pitched voice. It could be whatever and we may think, but we're looking for that in our stereotypical minds as we take things so literally. Uh, But the divine presence of God is speaking to us, ever whispering, ever acknowledging as we open up our mind, if we're opening up to the good as we sang or as we heard this song being played for us, we open ourselves up to it, we become receptive to it. Our real problem is we're not really good at listening to the things of God, listening for the voice of God and hearing. Have you ever been on a cruise? I've had the opportunity to go on several cruises. And one of the things that happens when you first board the ship is that they're gonna tell you they're gonna have a uh, fire drill, a safety drill to help you understand where the boats are in case there's a uh, fire on, uh, get your life uh, jackets on, line up, and this is gonna be your uh, station where you will depart from the boat if there's some sort of crisis. It's a safety drill. Uh, You know, the problem is, as people board the cruise ship, they're so excited about what's going to come, and and they're thrilled with all of the uh, adventures that are available to them. They're not paying any attention. They're not listening. I can't tell you how many cruises I've been on, and you watch these people with all of a sudden the alarm goes, what's the alarm all about? Well, they've been announcing a safety drill. What? A safety drill? For what? Is there problems? It's preparation. It's getting ready. And they're like, 
What? Well, where do I go? Where do I go? It's been listed on your cabin door. They've been announcing it over the loudspeaker. Oh, I've been too busy running around, enjoying the, the sights on the boat. I've been out on the deck. I've been getting cocktails. I've been doing all these kind of things that I'm getting ready to launch my cruise. I haven't listened. I wasn't paying attention. And it is hilarious to see people scrambling off down the hallways in the wrong direction and then being having to be corralled back by the crews and say, no, you're supposed to go over here. Were you not listening? Were you not listening? And you know how it is. The crew has all the megaphones and they're blowing all the whistles, trying to get the attention. What's happened is that so many people are distracted by a change, a change that they were not prepared for. And quite often in our spiritual journey, we just haven't prepared our life to hear the very voice of God speaking to us on a day-to-day -day basis, whispering guidance, whispering direction, offering comfort, offering strength, that we're not even acknowledging the very voices that come to us as the God sends, the very universe sends, the very spirit of the divine sends angels. That's right. People that may come our pathway and offer comments or words of guidance and support, instruction, but we're not paying attention because we're so distracted. And what happens is we don't often take the time to listen. Sometimes we just have to stop everything we're doing and just begin to listen. Not just sometimes, but let me just say it needs to be all the time because this is a lost art. The lost art of listening to the inner voice within us, listening to the very presence, the very God, thoughts, the very messages coming from God that said, behold, I bring you good tidings every single day of your life. Good tidings means good news. I've got something to tell you, some good, good news. That's right. God is always the bearer of something good, no matter what it may be. And you may say, well, I've experienced so many times when it seems like God is closing a door in my life. Oh, but one door closes means an even better one is opening for you. So when we listen to the very direction of the divine in our lives, we're realizing it's taking us maybe on this pathway that we may have some closed doors only to lead us to even better places where even bigger doors open up within our heart and our life. You know, we just have to listen and it's amazing what we'll hear. And a lot of people say, well, wait a minute. You know what? Well, if an angel came to me, I'd certainly listen. If I saw this white robe being with big wings landing down, if I saw this appearing to me, I, I'm afraid you'd poop your pants. Trust me, you'd be so frightened and scared if that really happened in your life. Thank God it doesn't because so many of you would be just so frightened and terrified if that actually literally happened. Oh, but we become so literal about a messenger of God. And we've now created this image that, oh, it must come forth if it's really of God in some sort of manifestation of a white robed angel with wings. Oh, let me tell you, they're messengers of God and those messengers are those God thoughts that come to us in the moment of stillness and quiet that become our inspiration. They become that which can be not the unusual, but the usual. That which should be our norm in our day-to-day -day life. We're allowing the Spirit of God to speak to us on a day-to-day -day basis where we're then being led by that inner voice that's kind of showing us the way and, and kindly showing us the pathway for us to walk in at all times of the day. Yes, we should realize that there is a message of peace that is there for us and it's always offering us the good tidings. For the Spirit of God is that inner peace and it's as close as our recognition of it. Sometimes we just don't have the ability, we haven't honed the craft of recognizing things, of recognizing God, of recognizing, wait a minute, what I just experienced or what's being said or what's happening in my life, that may be the very divine guidance of the Spirit of God leading and directing in my life. Here's what happens is sometimes we can't recognize something because we've allowed our lives to be so cluttered with everything of the five senses that we can't sense the spiritual that's beyond the five senses working in and through us. Quite often it's the stress that we entertain that blocks out any kind of awakening to the inner spirit speaking to us. 
That stress becomes a blockage, a barrier, that worry, that fear, that anxiety that builds up within our lives. There was a woman who spent a week preparing to lead a Bible study. She was in study and she was really dedicating her life to this moment when she was going to really unfold the goodness of God in this Bible study group. Really excited about it. And the day finally came for this first class. And she began so busy in the morning getting her family of six ready to go out to the door, off to work and school. It was the kids all kinds of coming up forward with all kinds of questions. Mommy this, mommy that, where's this, where's that? The hecticness of the day, trying to get breakfast, burning the toast. And she was having all kinds of challenges coming at her left and right. And her stress level was rising over and over again. She was going so frazzled, getting so frazzled and trying to maintain her composure. In the midst of all this bedlam, her husband entered the kitchen and surveyed the uproar and said, kids, settle down. Your mom is only 45 minutes until she has become a radiant Christian. You know, <laughs> how true it is in our life. We've just let stress diminish our light. And we're not that radiant beacon that we would like to be, that we thought we were being, that we prepared to be because we allowed the stress and the worry and the cares of the day to diminish our light and diminish our ability to be in tune with all the good that is of God. You know, we really have to be the kind of person that is in tune is to a certain extent that we're actually looking for it. Our ears are perking up. We're expecting it. We're hearing it. We're walking through the day. We need to be called this kind of person that says, every day I'm looking for how God is speaking. I'm listening. How is God speaking? I want to be in tune that the Spirit is leading and guiding me, and I want to be looking for it. For those who are looking for something, it appears. There was a garbage man in Peabody, Massachusetts, who one day noticed a Wendy's soft drink cup, and it had a little contest sticker on it. You know those little contests that they have for all the drive-through, uh, uh, the to, the to-go places, you know, all that are open nowadays, all these chains. Well, uh, having won a chicken sandwich a week before, he checked it out, think, well, you know, maybe I'll just pull the sticker off and maybe I'll get a chicken sandwich or a free beverage or free fries or something, hoping there'll be something simple on this coupon. Instead, he peeled the sticker off and won $200,000. Whoa, $200,000. And his friends began to say, well, how did you luck out? How did you? Well, he said, I was observant, I was looking, and I found this cup with a sticker on it. I found it because I was looking. And this is how true in our spiritual life, if we're looking for the goodness of God, if we're looking for, behold, there are good tidings coming, if we're looking for the message from the divine, if our eyes are open to it, we're going to be able to see it and receive it. For we get out of life what we're looking for. We get out of life exactly what we're looking for. And for many people, well, I'm just not really that observant to the good of God. I well, he wasn't looking for God's goodness, you know, and that's what they receive. And there are those with great enthusiasm and expectancy, as we spoke of last Sunday, living out this wonderful energy of saying, I am looking for the good. I'm opening up my heart to the good. I'm opening up my life to the good. I am observant of all the things and opportunities and ways that the Spirit of God is speaking to me. Here's the key, is that the guidance of God, the direction of God, the good news has always been there and waiting for us. It's been waiting for us and waiting for us to claim this experience of the Spirit of God comforting us as we shepherd our thoughts in the midst of the darkness, as we shepherd our thoughts trying to ward off all those things that may bring uh, discouragement and anxiety and fear to us. Let us not be so consumed in trying to watch over, but to receive in the midst of it a message of good news, of comfort and perfect peace. Right now, let me tell you this. The Spirit of God is speaking to us in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of all that is going on in our world today, the things that are happening within our country. The Spirit of God is speaking to us. Let us not be so consumed with shepherding the thoughts 
that we miss out on our moment, out on the fields of our life where the God messengers appear and speak to us, offering us tidings of good news. Now, in the midst of all of life and all of its drama, all of its chaos and confusion, inner peace is always available, available for us. It's waiting for us, that inner peace. We need not be alarmed as the messenger of God, the angel said, be, inviting them to be calm, to be still, to awaken, to be aware, and to begin to simply listen. That wonderful journey begins to unfold for we realize that this presence of God is with us, never leaving us or forsaking us. Do you realize that? That even right now, in the midst of what you're going through on the day-to-day -day basis, the presence of God has never left you, never once left you. Now, you may have stepped away from the awareness of that presence. You may have removed yourself from the very feeling of the divine good all around you. You may have removed yourself from being able to be intuitive enough to see, hear, and understand and experience the messages of God guiding you through your greatest challenges. You see, even in the Bible, we find the stories of the disciples crossing the Red Sea in a boat with Jesus. And a storm comes up and the boat is being tossed to and fro. And they're looking all around thinking, how do we save ourselves? What do we do? There's chaos and panic. And all we can think about is these waves are washing over our lives. And we may drown in this whole midst of it. And that's the story of so many of us. We feel the same way in the midst of all the challenges. And what's going on in the world? Feeling like we may drown. Feeling like the waves are overwhelming us and we're frightened. But in that same boat was Jesus, symbolizing this Christ consciousness, this full awareness of the divine Jesus is calm. He's asleep, at rest. Illustrating for us that even in the midst of every storm, this presence of the divine will never leave us, and we too can simply rest and be calm, knowing all things are working together for our good. That's all going to unfold in the end. We need not be fearful or frightened or scared. Because here's the big thing is we understand that what happened is the disciples turned to Jesus to awaken him. And when they woke him, he calmed the storm and said to them, where is your faith in believing that the calm has always been there, always been there for you? You just had to speak peace, speak words of peace. Speak comfort. Speak in the awareness that you have behold the good tidings, that you are aware of that perfect peace at all times within your life. So there's really no need to fear when we listen, because when we listen, we are in the oneness of God, and we know that God is always present, that God is ever powerful, that all things are possible, that God is all knowing and knows the scenarios and the situations you're in no matter what you're going through. And the words then speak to this troubled heart that in Christ there is no reason to fear. In the consciousness, the awareness of the divine presence, there is no reason to fear anything. So it's just stop in the midst of your fear and listen. And listen for this and turn in your awareness to the very presence of peace that's available to you at all times and realize that in this, what you're experiencing is this wonderful fortress of the divine God being your rock. So let me say, if you're out there in your routine of daily living, feeling like the shepherd tending to your thoughts, your sheep, your flock, all those things that are coming through your mind, and you're so absorbed, be in tune, be aware. Don't be startled, be calm. Because as we are in expectancy, the very voice of God's going to lead you through every trial, every tribulation, every challenge you have. This is the very promise of God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge God and God will direct your paths. God will speak, 
God will guide, God will give uh, instruction, wisdom. It's all there for us. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 has proclaimed this, and this is what we can hold so dear to our lives. So we need not experience a day of fear, anxiety, or stress. And we certainly need not be alarmed when that voice of direction speaks to us. We need to welcome it with great anticipation. I hope this week that you will be embracing the power of listening, the power of being in tune, the power of being intuitive and watching at all times for this divine inspiration to come to you, to lead you, to guide you, to speak in you, through you, and around you, and always for you in powerful ways. Because let me tell you this, this story and the unfolding of the shepherds awakening to this good news is your story. And we're called to awaken to the good news each and every day of our life. That's right, wake up. Wake up to the good news. Wake up to the Spirit of God telling you, I've got some good news for you today, even in the midst of your challenge. You need not be afraid. You need not be fearful. You need not be filled with worry. Just be calm and know that God's got it all under control, that the universe is at work, that this beautiful blessing of goodness is unfolding in our lives. And as we live from that, we're going to be in tune. We're going to hear more and more. We're going to be respon responsive to the guidance that comes to our life from that divine presence. For a child is born for us, and his name is Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, or Divine Source, Prince of Peace, is the passage from Isaiah 9, 6. This is the good news is that there is born in us a Prince of Peace. There is born in us the perfect peace in each and every moment, no matter what we're going through. Today, I invite you to welcome that inner peace. Amen.